If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistenrolf, here with a pretty heavily requested EDH deck tech for you. This is Animar Soul of Elements, my favorite commander. Which, I understand, makes me a terrible person, that's what I've heard at least. This is a super combo-rific commander. Uh, very simply, three mana, so tiny leaders playable, pro white and black, the two best removal colors, usually. Whenever you cast a creature spell, it gets a plus one plus one counter, and then creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each plus one plus one counter on Animar. If that sounds degenerate, don't worry, it is. Now there are a lot of unique cards in this deck, so I'm not going to show you every single one on screen, but 1080p, pause it if you need, and then the deck list is also in the description. So with that being said, let's get started. So we have, uh, first off, our ramp creatures. Now I have in this list, uh, depending on how you count them, I have seven ramp creatures. Uh, our one drops are Wild Canter and Birds of Paradise. Very simply, if we can get these out, then we get a turn to Animar, and all the better for us, of course. Uh, next we have the single best <laughs> ramp creature in the deck. It is Bloom Tender, because this can tap for up to three mana. Now often we're only tapping it for one or two to get out Animar, uh, because of course Animar is what gives us all three colors, but once we're there, this helps us a lot when we're comboing off. Uh, next we have Beast Caller Savant, Haste, and it can tap for mana of any color but only to cast a creature. Well thankfully everything in our deck sands, I think three cards are not creatures, and that's it. Yeah, I think it's only three, actually. Nice, right? So, yeah, the fact that it has haste means that eventually we'll get to the point where we just pay green, and then it'll pay for itself. Right off. Very good. Rattleclaw Mystic, which taps for any of our colors, so it might as well be Beast Caller, right? Except, we yeah, obviously no haste, except this can morph. And that'll be important later on. For right now, suffice it to say that you can cast this card for free by just casting it face down. Thanks to Animar, who will reduce the cost by three, or way, way, way more, that will give you a creature for free. And then you can morph it and gain uh, three mana, plus if it isn't summoning sick, you'll get another, yada, yada, yada. Lots of mana. And it'll help us combo off later on. We have Sylvan Caryatid, Defender, Hexproof, any mana. Alright, and next we have Voyaging Satyr as our last one. Simply untap target land. Alright, now you can add more, like Quirion Elves, for instance, but, and I don't know why Quirion Elves came to mind, but, but you can if you'd like. Uh, separate from the ramp creatures are my land creatures, which is to say they go and get lands. There's Sylvan Ranger first. This one will go and get me a basic and add it to hand. Soccer Tribe Elder will go and get a basic and put it on the field, tapped, but at the cost of having to sack itself. That's fine. We have Sad Robot. Good old Solemn here, shoutouts to Jens. Uh, on the front end, it gets us a basic land tapped. On the back end, when it dies, draw a card. Seems good. We have Wood Elves, which when it comes in, search your library for a forest, does not say basic forest, and put that forest into play. It does not say tapped. <laughs> Seems good. Look at that mana cost. I mean, eventually it'll just cost green and pay for itself, but geez. And deck thinning. Now this is Silverglade Elemental, Effectively the same mana cost when we're later on in combo, except this is a 4-4 instead of a 1-1. Usually that doesn't matter, but just we like that effect so much, we're playing another one. Next, we have card draw. We're going to start off with some really obvious ones. We have Elvis, Elv, Elvis, Elvis Visionary. <laughs> we have Elvish Visionary. It's your bread and butter. Comes into play, draw a card. Every other card in this deck, we want to be Elvis Visionary. They wish they could. They wish they could be that. Uh, we have Wall of Blossoms. <laughs> I say every other card. Every other card in this category either wants to be Elvish Visionary or wants to do the same thing but better. Uh, this is the same thing but Defender, 04. We have Alchemist Apprentice, color shifted except you have to sack it. Fair enough. Oh, and Human Wizard. 
We have Council of Advisors, three mana, but same effect. We have Merchant of Scrolls, functional reprint. We have Mole Drifter, the one mana draw two cards. Even if you evoke it, it'll count for Animar, that's important to note. But yeah, just two cards are better than one. Seems good. Now we have Wretched Griff, which you can free cast in this deck. It's not actually all that hard. You can sack a sad robot, you can sack some cards we'll get to later on. But yeah, just very simply draw a card and it flies and is a 3 4. We have, oh, these bad boys. We have Primordial Sage and Soul of the Harvest. Most of the time they end up being the same thing. Uh, not quite functional reprints, but most of the time they feel like it. What you care about is that in either case, you'll draw a card. Whenever you cast a creature spell, or whenever a non-token, another non-token creature ETBs, you get to draw a card. Seems good, it turns even our ramp creatures into more fuel for our combo. And plus this one's a foil, so that works by me. Now in addition we have some card selection, those are all draw a card, these actually let you sort through them. So we have Foul Emissary. Yeah, this is an Emerge enabler, but what we care about here is when it ETBs, look at the top four, get a creature out of them, put the rest on the bottom, but put that creature into your hand. Very nice. And a Human Whore. It, it reminds me of the fat officials from Demon Souls, if you played that game, shout out to Demon Souls. Alright, next we have Raven Familiar, same CMC. It lets us anticipate, but only three, you know, only three cards, but we get to pet take any, not just a creature. It has Echo, we usually don't care. We have Seagate Oracle. Uh, <laughs> not as good as even the Raven Familiar, uh, in most ways, but it doesn't die from Echo. I don't know, I'm trying to look on the bright side. We need another one of these effects, so this one lets us look at the top two and put one into our hand. Next we have Gurmog Drowner. So this is our impulse. Uh, but it has exploit, so it's a 2-4, exploit, look at the top four. I guess it's not quite impulse, because the ones that you don't pick go in your graveyard, not to the bottom of the library, but nevertheless, that's not a bad effect, <laughs> of course. Four cards is pretty deep for this deck. And then we have Tower Geist. When it uh, enters the battlefield, look at the top two. It does the same thing as this guy, except no exploit, and it's only top two cards. So... We have our mana, we have our card draw. What on earth are we doing? Actually, before we get there, these kind of go in the same category. We have two Cascade cards, two Cascade creatures. Cascade creatures, Cascade creatures, Cascade creatures. Okay, three times fast. We have Maelstrom Wanderer, uh, which helps us to combo off because creatures you control have haste. It turns all of our mana dorks into, well, mana on the turn that we're trying to go off. And Cascade, then Cascade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this gets you a lot of cards. For the low, low cost of three mana. That's it. Th this part doesn't matter in the deck. This part matters. And it's a 7-5, yada yada, but creatures you control have haste is super powerful in this deck. You can. It's so powerful that I've even run Urbrask the Hidden before, just to get an additional version of that effect. It's that good. On the turn you're trying to go off. Next we have Ethereum Horn Sorcerer. So, six mana, Cascade, and later on you can return it to your hand uh, for three mana and then Cascade again, yada yada yada, you get the idea. Lots of card advantage. Seems good. If, for whatever reason, you have mana up at the end of your opponent's turn, it gives you something to do with that mana. So now. <laughs> so now. Uh, I should note that I'm recording this before Aether Revolt has been released. I'm going to put this first one up on screen for you. Uh, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Not a market card. This is Trophy Mage. It hasn't been released yet. It's going straight in because Trophy Mage will legit be the second most power. I guess third most powerful after Animar. The third most powerful card in the deck. When it happens, ooh, it will happen. Uh, and I'll show you why in just a second because it goes and gets the second most powerful card in the deck. Uh, next we have Imperial Recruiter, which goes and gets a. Uh, any creature seems, or not seems, the power two or less. That's uh, that's important. Uh, so it can go and get us some combo cards later on. It can go and get Trophy Mage. Trophy Mage in and of itself revolutionizes the deck, I think. 
Okay, but, but, but we'll get to that in just a second. We'll show you why. And it just gets you all kinds of crazy cards. It gets you your Mole Drifter. It gets you creatures that have uh, zero power by default, but that can get stronger later on. If you want to run Hangerback Walker, I don't, but that's one. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Uh, next, we can use Fierce Empath. Uh, think of it as color shifted Imperial Recruiter, except instead of caring about power being low, it cares about CMC being high. So get a creature card with CMC 6 or greater, which is obviously an awful lot in this deck, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. I'm surprised more EDH decks don't run that card, actually. Uh, next we have Fauna Shaman. So yeah, I like running a creature version of it's Survival of the Fittest, right? Am I remembering that correctly? I think so. So yeah, pay green, tap, discard a creature, go get any creature from your deck and put it into your hand. Yeah, that, that gets... Super that makes combos super consistent including ones. We're about to show you in just a sec. Oh, by the way, it also gets trophy mage <laughs> Yeah, um, so what if you have fauna shaman you can get trophy mage imperial recruiter can get trophy mage fierce empath Can't get trophy mage, but it can go and get brutalizer exarch which goes and gets trophy mage so for one mana this is all colorless doesn't matter. It does when you first cast animar it, it very quickly ceases to matter uh, it costs green to either put a creature, it basically worldly tutors, uh, put a creature from your deck on top of it, make it your next draw, uh, and it also can, if you absolutely need it to, put target non-creature permanent on the bottom of its owner's library. So if something is keeping you from comboing off, then well, there you go. Otherwise, it goes and gets trophy mage, or whatever you need for the situation, but often trophy mage. Oh my goodness, you, you'll see why. If you don't know, you haven't played against Animar yet, that's all. Uh, next we have Conduit of Ruin. Uh, when you cast it, go and get a colorless creature card with CMC 7 or greater, reveal it, put it on top, and then the first creature spell you cast each turn costs 2 less to cast. That part usually doesn't matter because, again, Animar. Um, yeah, I don't know that that's ever actually mattered for me in one of my games, but what you care about is that it's a free cast <laughs> tutor that goes and gets you other free cast cards and puts them on top. Now, uh, when you cast it, you search and put it on top. When it enters the battlefield, you get to draw off Soul of the Harvest. Or with Primordial Sage, you can just stack the trigger such that you'll draw whatever you put on top. So effectively, this means when you have either of those, draw whatever card you put on top. Very nice. Okay, now that we have those out of the way, let's look for our enablers. Some of our enablers include these four, which all do effectively the same thing. They untap lands. So there's Cloud of Fairies, which untaps two lands, and it costs two, but no, it costs one, actually. I think you guys get the gist of it. Next we have Peregrine Drake. <laughs> yeah, let's get all the banned Popper cards. Uh, rip Peregrine Drake and Popper. Uh, untaps five for one mana. Next we have Palinkron. Uh, so this one untaps 7 for 2 mana, but you can pay 4 mana, including 2 blue, to return it to your owner's hand. Now wait a minute, if I'm only paying 2, you see where this is, you see where this is going already, if I'm only paying 2 for it to get it out, and I pay 6 to return it into my hand, but I'm untapping 7 lands, then as long as I have 7 or more lands, I make infinite mana. <laughs> That's how that works. Infinite mana in any combination of colors. Ta-da! Or as my daughter would say, ta-da! And because that effect is so good, we run almost strictly worse uh, Palinkron, which is Great Whale. Shoutouts to obvious proxies. I apologize. I don't own the card, though. I'm sorry. Alright, so, anyway, comes into play, untap up to seven lands. Doesn't fly. <laughs> it's a 5-5 five five instead of a 4-5. Oh! But no, in all seriousness, that effect is so good, we want four copies of it instead of just the three. We want that consistency with it. Uh, next we have some bounce effects to let us reuse card draw, for instance, or untapping lands. We have Fairy Imposter. One mana when it enters the battlefield. Uh, sack it. Unless you return another creature you control to its owner's hand, you're usually all too eager to go for that. Returning, say, Elvish Visionary. You get the idea. Next we have Shrieking Drake. Same thing, except you don't have to sacrifice it, it's just return a creature you control. So if you don't have enough creature, an another creature, you just return it. Oh yeah, once you have infinite mana, boom 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't kill the storm though in this deck. 
I should run Storm Entity. No, I shouldn't. There's an option for you, though. Uh, Dream Stalker lets you return any permanent you control to its owner's hand. It doesn't have to just be itself or another creature. Do what you have to do. Next, we have Mana War, which is unsummon on a 2-2. You can return your opponent's creatures if you need to, but often you're doing the same thing. You're just returning one of your creatures for value. And all of those cost one mana once Animar is online. Uh, next we have the fourth most powerful card in the deck, Ancestral Statue. When it enters the battlefield, return a non-land permanent you control to its owner's hand. You can return Ancestral Statue to your hand. So once you have Animar with at least four counter, well, yeah, you, you get where this is going. It costs nothing. You play it, return it, play it, return it, play it, return it. Animar gets infinitely big. I know you have to pick an arbitrarily high number, but, you know, you can pick a Googleplex and then some. And now, you thought that was good. You thought infinite Animar, uh, infinite power and toughness, and your creatures all cost nothing, or as close to nothing as they can be. You thought that was good. Now for the most powerful card in the deck. That isn't Animar. I want a masterpiece of this so much. This is Cloudstone Curio. This is a sick card. <laughs> so whenever a non-artifact permanent comes into play under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. Okay, let me tell you the many, many, many ways that this card is broken. I actually probably should have given this card later on so that I could give you even more context. So for instance, I don't know, Cloud of Fairies and, I don't know, you're next to it, Peregrine Drake. Once you have enough lands, Cloud of Fairies, untap them, and it only costs you one, by the way. So let's say it costs you one, so you pay one, Cloud of Fairies, trigger on the stack, tap all of your lands, or tap however many, you're going to untap two. Okay, cool. Peregrine Drake, you know, spend one mana. Uh, tap five, you're about to untap them in just a second, but you're going to return Cloud of Fairies to your hand with Cloudstone Curio out. You can do this to gain infinite mana. You, you see the loop here. They're just going to keep bouncing each other back and forth, and each time you're netting mana by tapping more lands than you need to to pay for the cost. That's good, obviously. Uh, tr try that with, instead of uh, Peregrine Drake, say Silverglade Elemental. Get all the forest out of your deck. Same thing with Wood Elves. Solemn, get all the basics out of your deck. Sylvan Ranger, same thing, but they're on the in your hand instead of on the field. Uh, any of your card draw cards, get all of the cards in your deck. And so on and so forth. Brutalizer Exarch, return all of their non-creatures to the bottom of the deck. <laughs> Fierce Empath, get a bunch of stuff out of your deck. Uh, this is the only legal target for Trophy Mage. The only legal target. This card is so powerful that we run Trophy Mage just for Cloudstone Curio. We don't need anything else. That is how good it is. And the fact that Trophy Mage is a creature means that we have so many ways to go and get it now. It's not just draw until you find Cloudstone Curio. It's draw till you find Curio, so that's one. Or till you find Trophy Mage, that's two. Or till you find, uh, say, Imperial Recruiter, that's three. Or so that you, until you find Fierce Impact to get Brutalizer to get Trophy Mage, that's four. You get the idea. There, <laughs> it makes finding it more consistent. And we haven't even shown you all of the ways that that card is broken yet. We have not gotten there. We're getting there. We haven't gotten there yet. Uh, speaking of which, though, let's get into some win cons. So, the normal win cons first. The easy enough win cons. We start off with Crater Hoof Behemoth. If we're going to swarm the field, we might as well get some good value out of that, right? When it enters, uh, it has haste. Creatures you control get plus X, plus X, and trample, where X is the number of creatures you control. And, with Cloudstone Curry, you can keep doing this over and over again. <laughs> so your creatures, a cr Crater Hoof won't get infinitely big, but all of your other creatures will be. And if they're not summoning sick, and they have trample, so if they're not summoning sick, GG. Often. Next we have Genesis Hydra. This... <laughs> I love this deck. I love this deck so much. Alright, so you can pay two mana, and however many counters are on Animar. Uh, when you cast it, look through the top, reveal the top X cards of your library, so reveal your library. <laughs> you may put a non-land permanent card with CMC X or less uh, among them onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest, and then with Cloudstone Curio, do this again and again and again, and get all of them out, <laughs> all of the non-land permanents out onto the field. 
<laughs> now they're not cast, so you won't get cast triggers, but you can get everything else. Oh boy. <laughs> Just get your whole deck out on the field. Don't think about that too much. Next we have Oblivion Sower. So for free, when it enters the battlefield, or when you cast it, target opponent exiles the top four cards of their library, then you can put any number of land cards that they own from exile uh, into play. Seems good. So not only do you take four cards, but if they've exiled any other lands prior to that, say for Delve, you get those too. But with Cloudstone Curia, we can just mill everybody from the game. <laughs> just make them exile the top four cards, then repeat, 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 do this for all opponents. <laughs> I love this deck, and we're just getting started. There's Artisan of Kozilek for another Eldrazi here. Uh, when you cast it, you get to return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's powerful enough on its own for a 0 mana 10 9 Annihilator 2. Uh, but, <laughs> once again, Cloudstone Curio, get all your creatures back, and there's some interesting little loops here. Like with Alchemist Apprentice, you can draw all the cards in your deck. With Sakura Tribe Elder, you get all the basics out. And there are seven basics here, so that's not too broken, but that's... 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 yeah, no, it's broken. Alright, next we have Kozilek Butcher of Truth. Uh, <laughs> when you cast it, draw four cards, Annihilator four, and then it has the old Eldrazi. When it hits the grave, shuffle it back in. Okay, fair enough. Draw all the cards in your deck. Um... <laughs> With Cloudstone Curia. Do I even need to say that anymore? <laughs> Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. Exile all of the cards that they have on the field. All of their permanents. Exile them. Everybody's. Normally it's two, but we get to loop it. As many times as we want. Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. Because we only can run one Ceaseless Hunger. This one doesn't exile, it simply destroys. But the fact that it only destroys one permanent doesn't matter when you can loop this as many times as you need. I love this deck. Oh, and Annihilator 4. Yeah, because we need that too. Okay, so other win conditions in the deck. Well, we have Kiki Jiki. <laughs> Not just for value, we can make ourselves draw more cards by hitting a Mole Drifter or whatnot if we need to, but in addition to that, we are, if this weren't obvious enough, running a Splinter Twin package. We have one, of, one Deceiver Exarch. One Pester by I'm a terrible person. And then one Zealous Conscripts. Shoutouts to Zealous Conscripts for letting me take a Memnarch and then using Memnarch's ability to let me keep control of the Memnarch. Gain control of target artifact. That lasts indefinitely. This does not. That lasts indefinitely. Okay, so we have Kiki Jiki and we have Deceiver Exarch Pester My Zealous Conscripts. And even with all the tutors, that may not be consistent enough. This is, after all, a singleton format. But. In addition to those tutors and card draw, we have one Signal the Clans. Search your library for up to three creature cards and reveal them. <laughs> Pick your poison, it doesn't really matter. They're all one mana, and they all win me the game with Kiki Jiki. Anyway, they have to be with different names, but this is EDH, that's no problem. Uh, choose one of them at random, and put that card in your hand, shuffle the rest in your library. So, doesn't really matter what they pick. I love this deck. <laughs> this is the most fun you can play at EDH. No, 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 in all seriousness. Um, the deck, I'll get to discussion about the deck in just a minute. So here come the utility cards. We have uh, two copiers. We have Phantasmal Image, actually with three. Uh, very versatile for two mana, so very early on you can just simply copy a draw card like an Elvish Visionary if you need to. Um, and obviously it'll start to cost one very early on for you. Easy enough. The fact that you have to sacrifice it if it's targeted doesn't usually matter in EDH, where targeted removal is less prevalent, it's usually Wraths for instance, um, and this is cheap. This is, this is one mana. Two or one. And then we have zero mana. We have Phyrexian Metamorph, which doesn't just have the ability to copy a creature, but also an artifact. Uh, except it's an artifact in addition to his other types. You pay zero mana and Phyrexian mana, so two life. Et voila! You have yourself an insert whatever piece you need. Uh, if you put that on Soul of the Harvest, good on you. Good on you. Next we have Altered Ego, so it can't be countered, and it becomes a copy, or enters the battlefield as a copy, um, of any creature on the battlefield, not just yours, except with X additional plus one plus one counters. So... 
<laughs> uh, yeah, it gets pretty big. It gets pretty big pretty quickly. I like uh, Oblivion Sowers that come in as Infinity Infinities. Uh, now for our removal. We don't have much removal in the deck, notwithstanding, say, the Ulamogs <laughs> that I mentioned earlier, for instance, but we do have Duplicant. Uh, unfortunately, this is one of those sees play in not every EDH decks, but it sees an awful lot of play. Again, shoutouts to Proxies, sorry about that. Um, yeah, Imprint comes into play, remove target creature, you may remove target creature uh, from the game, and then this has the power, toughness, and creature type. And it's still a shapeshifter. So, yeah, just free. It's a zero mana creature removal spell. That seems alright. Next we have Phyrexian Ingester. Not quite the same thing. It only costs you one mana. And it doesn't gain their type. It doesn't actually even gain... Uh, it gets plus X plus Y rather than gaining their power and toughness. So it'll be three plus X and then three plus Y. You get the idea. It's a removal spell. That's what we care about. Next we have Garuk's Horde. Shout out to this promo, this gorgeous, gorgeous promo. You get to play with the top card of your library revealed. You don't care that you're giving your opponent information because you can cast the top card of your library if it's a creature. In this deck, that seems pretty good. That seems pretty good. This is quite the draw spell in and of itself, even though it doesn't technically draw cards. Then we have the zero mana, I can't lose and you can't win card. <laughs> yeah. I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> I'm a jerk. And then we have the zero mana or one mana uh, fortune thief. We have Ali from Cairo over here. Shoutouts to Ali from Cairo for being... Weren't you one of the first banned cards or first restricted cards in the game? I'm pretty sure. Alright, so anyway, it, it's worship. Damage that would reduce your life total less than one reduces it to one instead. Okay, fair enough. I say worship because worship requires you have a creature. This one is a creature, so kind of feels like the same thing. Uh, and you can morph. Now the reason morph is so important is that, again, Cloudstone Curio, these things cost no mana, you can just boom 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 between morph cards, or between morphs and just anything really. <laughs> any, any of your Eldrazi because they cost nothing, any of your untapped land creatures because they net you mana, etc. You get the idea. Uh, if you need more ways to keep yourself from losing, again, shoutouts to Ali from Cairo, uh, there's also Elder Scale Worm. This is one thing that I used to run, but green, green, green is a little oppressive in this deck. Not the fact that it's 7 mana, the fact that it's 3 mana is oppressive in this deck. But this one can actually beat down on its own if you need to. Platinum Angel can too, but it's only a 4-4 flyer. This is a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler, it makes it a little bit easier if you need to. Um, yeah, it also gets you back a little bit from the brink because it puts your life total to 7 instead of 1, which matters occasionally, like for fetching for instance. Uh, be careful with that though, because uh, as long as you have 7 more life, damage that would reduce your life total to less than 7 reduces it to 7. So if you fetch, you go below 7, and then this doesn't work anymore until you can bounce it. Pro tip. Pro tip for you. And then... Oh, by the way, I'm not running the worm, in case I didn't make that clear. That's an option for you. Uh, next, Grinning Ignis is also not in the deck, but it's so close to making the cut. If you played Modern Masters Draft and you wanted to play Storm, you played Grinning Ignis, because this would get you a bunch of Storm on it. Uh, and with Animar, it only costs you red, you pay red, and you get back two in red. But you're still losing mana each time, uh, because you have to pay one red. You n net loss one mana each time, which is why I'm not running it. But it gives you a way to build up counters on Animar without going infinite. Just an option, just there for you, in case that's what you're looking for. And it's also kind of cheap, I think. Uh, next, for the lands, <laughs> we have one mountain, two islands, shout outs to this particular art because I am 13. Just, yeah, just, yeah. And then we have four forest. Pro, uh, kudos if you have all the same art. I am one four shy of being able to play my uh, third edition German misprint forest in here. M missing just one. The, uh, I know I'm not going to pronounce it correctly. W A L D. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, next we have Guy's Cradle. Uh, because it's not like we don't run that many creatures <laughs> in this deck. <tech. laughs> 
<laughs> you don't need Guy's Cradle, but if you have it, you might as well run it. It's such a sick card. Uh, next we have our various uh, color packages here. So these are all the single color ones. And action. All right, so for each two color combination, we have the following. We have a fetch land. We have a shock land, a dual land, shoutouts to proxies, and a filter land for each of these. Uh, in the case of Gruul, or Atarka, or Red Green, we also have the Buddy Land, Rootbound Crag, we have Grove of the Burn Willows, and I know that's going to seem a little bit weird, but I will explain why. We have two Tap Lands. They give you one, usually irrelevant, life point uh, when they enter, and they come in tapped. I know, I know, well, but they produce either of those colors. I'll explain why in just a moment. Next we have for Simic, uh, the same deal to start. We have Fetchland, Shockland, Dual Land, Filterland, Buddy Land, Life Land, Simic Guildgate. It's shiny. I have to. I'm sorry. That's gorgeous, I think. All right. Uh, so then for is it? We have, again, fetch land, shock land, dual land, filter land, and that's actually it for that color combination because it's the least relevant color combination in the deck. It doesn't make green, and that's really what we care about. We want to make green if possible. Uh, we still need them, par partially because of, like, well, just look at how many green mana symbols happen to be in the CMC of cards we have in the deck. Yeah, Kiki Jiki is pretty red intensive, but we can incidentally come up with enough red mana to play Kiki Jiki. That's fine, usually. Uh, that all being the case, the filter lands, like, for example, Cascade Bluffs, usually we're gonna call blue blue with that. We usually need the blue way more than we need the red. Again, notwithstanding Kiki Jiki. That's pretty much it. By the way, that's another reason why Urubrask isn't in the deck. It can't be found with Fierce Empath, and it only it has red red in the cost. Uh, so next for our five color, or not five color, three color, our all color ones, we have Command Tower because EDH, duh. Uh, we have Ancient Ziggurat because it's so any mana, but only for creatures. We don't have that many non-creatures in the deck. I think we're okay. Next we have Reflecting Pool gives us any color of mana. As long as we have anything that produces any color out on our side, then yes, this will let us tap for any color. It doesn't do anything on the first turn, but that's the only turn where it shouldn't do anything for you. Frontier... Bivouac, I think is... I don't know. B-I-V-O-U-A-C. It's effectively command tower that comes in tapped. It gives us all of the colors in this deck. Opal Palace. Now, yes, this produces colorless mana. Uh, you can filter it into any color. If you need to bring back Animar, this gives you the ability to do so with Animar having a plus one plus one counter already on it, which means you don't have to play. You need. You have one less creature that comes in at full cost or at a more than minimum cost. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. So it's good for that reason. In Animar, above any other commander that I've seen anyway. Next we have the Vivid Cycle. They come in tapped, they come in with two charge counters. You can tap it for its own color, in this case like red, blue, green, or you can remove a charge counter and tap it for any color. Seems good. Seems good indeed. And if you remember playing back in the good old days of Lorwyn, these and Reflecting Pool allowed people to play <laughs> Some crazy color, like, you could play Cryptic Command in the same deck that you were running, oh, what's the, the elemental with green, 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 flash, reach, <laughs> comes in, deals two damage to every flyer in each player. You could run those in the same deck. It was a crazy time. It really was. All right, and that is this deck. 99 cards, but a, and, a, and a commander is one, and a commander is one. Okay. So there we go. Uh, this is the deck as it stands right now. There's a lot of flexibility in, say, especially the card draw. 
Uh, if you want to run Haru Ona and a few more spirits, go for that. If you want to run Griff Vanguard, cool. If you want to run... There's a lot of uh, selection that you have if you don't have these particular cards, and most of the deck is actually fairly cheap. The land base is, of course, by far the most expensive part of it. And yeah, Cloudstone Curio is not cheap. Ulamog isn't cheap for now, but for the most part, the deck is a lot of uh, commons and uncommons that just draw you cards and have effects like those that normally would be absolutely worthless. Why do I love playing this deck? Well, one, it's actually really difficult. If you're trying to combo off, sequencing is so important. I, I, in one of my videos, I think it was... <sighs> Go and watch the video. I, I'm, I may be wrong, but I think it was about 30 minutes that I spent just doing one combo turn. And my opponent, thankfully, uh, had a trigger that kept going off so she didn't have to fall asleep or go out to get something to eat. <laughs> um, but, nevertheless, I spent a really long time on one term. That, that is an awesome challenge and I love it, even if your opponent doesn't so much because they're just sitting there. But yeah, that, that is a crazy way. To, that's one reason why. Uh, I like playing decks that have this many moving parts to them. It's not actually all that linear. Maybe it starts out that way, where ramp creatures first, then card draw and selection, and then on and on like that. But especially on the turn you're trying to combo off, in order to get the most out of it, you have to play pretty optimally. So that's one reason. Another is that it avoids having to play so many of the staples that are found in basically every other EDH deck. I mean, you're running Solemn Simulacrum, Simulacrum, and you're running Duplicant. Aside from that, though, Basically, no, you're just, you're doing your own thing. You don't have Soul Ring, because Soul Ring actually does you basically no good in this deck. Well, especially, once you get to the point where everything is only costing its colored mana, you don't care. You really don't. You're not running Darksteel Ingot because it's not a creature and doesn't really fuel your game plan past that. Uh, you're not running Mana Vault, Mana Crypt, you're not running basically anything like that. <laughs> you don't have to. You just run a, you're not running Cyclonic Rift, although you could. <laughs> I would not blame you. Uh, yeah, you, you don't need as many staples. The deck is very good at doing its own thing because it's one of the few dedicated combo decks that we have. And when I say combo, I don't mean it just happens to have a combo in it. This is a, basically the whole deck works for the combo. Uh, notwithstanding, Splinter Twin is doing its own thing here. <laughs> Aside from that, though, the rest of the deck is a combo. And also, it is, uh... Okay, so expensive cards in the deck that can be taken out. Guy's Cradle, Dual Lands, Filter Lands. Ideally, you could get your hands on those, but if you can't, play more tap... Oh, I almost didn't explain that, just really quickly. So, for example, instead of these tap lands, you could run Pain Lands. That's, that's right, they don't come in tapped and then give you your colors. Usually, you don't care about losing life. But, but, if your combo involves untapping lands in order to make infinite mana, then every time you tap them, you either have to tap them for colorless mana, which doesn't do you any good later on because all of your cards are just costing uh, colored mana, that's it, or no mana, or you would take one each time, and that caps how much you can do. So that's why we're not running uh, all of the, we're not running any of the pain lands, just in case you were wondering. And so anything that has a similar effect where we would lose life for tapping them, we don't want to have here. It cuts off that one particular combo. That's all. Uh, that being the case, there are plenty of lands that come in tap that give you both of your colors if you just need budget alternatives for these. Absolutely, go right ahead. You can run uh, Rupture Spire, Transkill Promenade, it, cards like those, you can run more basics. It's possible to make that part of the deck cheap enough that this is actually affordable, and as such, I don't really know how much the deck would cost if we brought everything down, everything down. Uh, there is a certain critical mass point. You have to have Cloudstone Curio to play this. You don't have to have the Splinter Twin package. You have to have plenty of card draw elements, plenty of um, ways to go in tutor. You don't need Imperial Recruiter, but and there is a certain, when I say a, a critical mass point, a threshold, there are some cards you absolutely have to have. Cloudstone Curia. That's pretty much the only card you have to have to make this deck work. I guess Trophy Mage and Ancestral Statue are also up there. But if you don't have Imperial Recruiter, do not worry about it. Uh, it's a great card in the deck, and it makes the deck a lot more consistent. 
but you don't need it. There's nothing in the deck that you really need. Okay, so that all being the case, I hope that you enjoy this deck. I will get some more games with this as soon as I can, and you will get to see me make my opponent either fall asleep, uh, walk away to go get something from one of the fast food joints around us, or uh, travel all the way to Ohio and back in the course of one combo turn. I guess if you, if you think I'm in Ohio, no, actually no one thinks I'm in Ohio, listen to the way I sound. No, 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 no. Alright. Animar, you are awesome. Seems cool. Alright, that's it. Take care, Magic Community. I will see you later. Bye-bye.